Okay, I will start, Dr. Safa. Okay. Okay, Fatah. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome everybody for the second meeting for Monophilia Anesthesia Club. And today we have uh, Professor Isam uh, Manna, and he will talk about a case based discussion and the case about huge mediastinal mass. Professor Isam is professor of anesthesiology in Asyut University in Egypt. Also, he is a professor consultant of anesthesia in King Khalid Hospital in King Saud University in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. And Dr. Assam will explore his case first, and at the end, everybody can write his comment in the chat box, because uh, it is difficult everybody to talk, just uh, a point of organization. If you have any question, any comment, please write it in the chat box, okay? And we are waiting for Professor Assam for his lecture. Welcome, Professor Assam. You can share your slides. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salat wa salam ala ashraf al mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Fi al-bidaya, ahab in nana uhannik kull al-nas fi Masr wa especially fi al-munufiyya bil-aam al-jadid. Rabbina ajalu aam sa'ad wa hana wa khair ala kull al-nas bi-izni Allah. Uh, it is a great uh, pleasure, pleasure and honor for me to uh, uh, be between uh, my uh, elegant and respected people in uh, the uh, Minufia Anesthesia Club uh, and uh, also uh, in collaboration with the uh, syndicate of the uh, Medical Minufia. Uh, uh, it is uh, very nice uh, for launching such CME uh, activities and of course I'd like to thank uh, Professor uh, Safa uh, Hilal and appreciate her great efforts for making such activities and I hope from all the universities in Egypt and everywhere to get the same steps uh, like this because one of the most important uh, and precious uh, improvement and progress in the field of the science is the, uh, is the continuous medical education. And uh, 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 no doubt that one uh, of the important uh, issues for uh, continuous medical education is the attending of uh, such lectures and uh, conferences. And one of the main pillars of the conference, as you know, is the uh, lectures, the workshops, and the uh, case discussion or case management. And for myself, I prefer the uh, case discussion and the workshop because it is more practical than the lectures. But as all of us and all the scientists you know that the main pillar of the conference is the uh, lecture. That's why my topic today is about a true case we already did in our university in uh, King Khalid University Hospital in King Saud University in Saudi Arabia. It is the anesthesia management of mediastinal mass. It was a huge mediastinal mass. So we are going to discuss this case and uh, I hope to get benefit from all the attendees uh, in uh, Munufia and elsewhere from uh, this uh, discussion. And just to make attention for my colleagues, my junior colleagues, that uh, 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 no exam is away from the uh, thoracic discussion or thoracic cases. It is very, very important to know about how to anesthetize, anesthetize a case in the uh, field of the thoracic anesthesia because it needs some of the skills and some of the uh, experience and regularity in the attendance of uh, the thoracic cases. That's why this is important for the uh, our colleagues and uh, uh, our juniors to 
get benefit from uh, such uh, cases. It is a true case, as I mentioned, and uh, it is not a scenario. It is a true case we did 15 uh, days back in our theater, uh, and it was a very rare uh, case. Uh, and uh, 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 my objectives of the lectures, uh, we will speak about the case history of uh, this uh case and uh, of course uh, we will go for the how to uh, isolate the lung or deflate the lung there are a lot of methods for lung isolation and deflation and the uh, we will speak about the indication of uh, uh, isolation of either side the left side or the uh, right side with uh, some of illustration of the tools uh, used in isolation of uh, the uh, lung. And of course, the technique or how to isolate the left or the right lung. Uh, and uh, of course, we'll speak about the advantage and disadvantage of each tool. And uh, practically, uh, at the end of this uh, uh, presentation, we'll speak about the case management strategy, what we uh, did in such case. And uh, we, uh, as usual, we should give a home message and conclusion for uh, such uh, cases. This is from our uh, computer. This is from uh, our uh, computer in our university. That's why I uh, prefer to bring uh, uh, the history from the uh, system, back system. Uh, he was a 21 years old university student, male patient. He had a history of adrenal tumor diagnosed since long time, since he was uh, two or three uh, years. He presented in King uh, Ablaziz University Hospital. We are working in King University uh, Hospital, and it is different from King Ablaziz University Hospital, but in the same in the uh, Riyadh but it is specified for uh, the dealing with uh, ENT and ophthalmic uh, cases. So he presented in King Abdulaziz University Hospital with a shortness of breast, which was worsening over time for six months and weight loss of 22 kg over these six months, in two months, sorry. And this accompanied by night sweets and chest pain and dry scapular pain. So uh, after examination, CT scan had been done for the patient and showed a large heterogeneous hyper-enhancing solid anterior mediastinal mass, having multiple areas of necrosis and adjacent pleural with pericardial effusion and compression of severe vena cava. Uh, this, uh, uh, the uh, people there in the uh, King of Aziz, they uh, consider uh, this image as the future diagnosis of cymic malignancy or germ cell tumor uh, to be considered. And uh, uh, other differential diagnosis of anterior mediastinal mass cannot be, of course, ruled out. There was no bony changes in the thoracic spine, which needs hematological uh, assessment to rule out anemia as a cause of this bony findings. Of course, after uh, getting CT scan, mediastinal mass biopsy had been taken and showed high grade malignant polymorphic neoplasm favoring polymorphic myxoid liposarcoma. And uh, this patient had been admitted to the hospital in 2710. Uh, as a case of mediastinum liposarcoma for uh, management. And of course, we have a, a tumor board uh, to uh, be discussed in this uh, board and arrangement uh, go for new adjuvant chemotherapy and the patient received chemotherapy uh, and repeated CT scan uh, had been uh, done, but it was uh, stable. But some <clears throat> of uh, uh, new left lower pulmonary embolism had been developed, uh, started on, and they, they shifted this patient to the thoracic surgeon uh, who started anticoagulation uh, and they gave uh, him two consecutive 
two doses of uh, uh, TPP. After that, the patient went to for pre-anesthetic evaluation. And uh, sorry for this highlight of the blue uh, one because I uh, hide it the name of uh, the physicians and the uh, patient ethically to hide this in uh, presentation. And uh, in the uh, pre-anesthetic evaluation, we, uh, they, uh, our uh, senior registrar, they took the history of the present illness. And uh, again, a 21 years male with advanced mediastinal mass uh, on chemotherapy, history of pulmonary embolism, shortness of breath, Saturation well on room air, history of adrenal mass removal, minimal function capacity, and uh, 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 he had uh, factor seven uh, deficiency. Regarding to the airways, he had restricted mouth opening and malampati class of three with intact tooth, neck movement with normal. Uh, level. Uh, all the labs with uh, normal. Uh, uh, level uh, except low hemoglobin, albumin is low uh, with elevated uh, liver function test and co altered coagulation uh, profile. As you see here, this is a picture. This is a picture of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, plain X ray on the left side. And as you see here, there is a shift of the mediastinal to the uh, left side and uh, up. almost the uh, whole lung is uh, uh, not uh, ventilated on the uh, right side, except of the upper uh, lobe, little of the upper lobe uh, indicates the huge amount of, or the huge size of the mediastinal mass. This is the CT. And as you see here, there is compression totally on the uh, right side, obliterating the lung. And uh, uh, there is a shift of the mediastinal to the uh, left uh, side. It is very huge uh, mass, as you see here. Uh, that's why this was uh, just a history of uh, uh, the uh, mediastinal mass. Uh, regarding to the uh, lung isolation or deflation techniques, techniques, we have two techniques with the uh, lung deflation or lung isolation. Uh, we have uh, the first one is called without, the second one is called within. What is meant by without and within? Uh, Without means using of single lumen tube, SLT, single lumen tube, and insufflation of the capno CO2 in the thoracic cavity, or what it is called the capno thorax. And when we are using this uh, technique, it is only used in management of the hyperhidrosis of the palm uh, by. Uh, injecting of the uh, CO2 in the uh, thoracic uh, uh, cavity. How to be done this technique? We are using usual as normal single lumen tube with induction, normal with induction of anesthesia and using of muscle relaxants. And usually this technique is bilateral. So we are using the single lumen technique as usual as any operation. And uh, the surgeon is using what is called the virus needle or the troker in the thoracic cavity and injecting the CO2 to deflate the lung. He is injecting about 10 ml or cc of CO2. And while he is injecting the CO2 by the virus needle, we, are, we stop the ventilation. How to stop the ventilation? We are switching, we switch from the uh, uh, volume control or uh, pressure control to spontaneous uh, uh, ventilation. And this, it will take no more than uh, seconds, maximum one minute. So it doesn't affect on the level of the CO2 or level of uh, oxygenation. And after injecting by the virus needle of the thoracic 
cavity by CO2, the lung is deflated, and the surgeon is going for sympathectomy, thoracic sympathectomy. So this is for management of the uh, palm hyperhidrosis. And after that, we are inflating the uh, lung or recruit for the lung uh, with the uh, application of the silastic intercostal tube underwater seal to prevent trapping of uh, the air. And the, this maneuver, it takes bilaterally no more than uh, from 15 to 20 minutes. So it is very short maneuver. And the surgeon is using the cutting technique or diathermy or clipping of the uh, sympathetic uh, uh, trap. Uh, so he, this, is, this is the technique is sympathectomy, thoracic sympathectomy using single lung tube and capnothorax. The second one, which is the usual one, while we are using double human tube or beta blocker. And the beta blocker, even uh, either dependent or independent beta blocker, as we will see uh, now. And this is the common uh, technique for lung uh, isolation. This is the traditional technique for lung isolation or uh, deflation. Before going in details for the lung uh, deflation or isolation, we should mention some of the peer word about the lung uh, isolation. Uh, we should know that the left side double lumen tube is the master one, is the most common device to be used. And we should know it while we are going in the uh, thoracic anesthesia, and it is the master one. Uh, and every fellow who wants to be specified in uh, thoracic anesthesia should master dealing with the left double lumen tube. And it is the most common device used for lung isolation because of its greater margin of safety. Of course, there is right double lumen tube as we will see uh, later. The use of bronchial blockers is indicated in patients who present with some of the difficult airways and require lung uh, uh, isolation. Uh, some of the patients we uh, faced with tracheostomy in place who, is, who are requiring lung isolation and this best managed by the use of bronchial uh, blocker. And of course, there is no thoracic anesthesia without the using of flexible fiber optic bronchoscopy. This is a mandatory. It is recommended as a method to achieve optimal position of lung isolation. Before, we used lung isolation by listening to the chest, but nowadays, in the availability of the fiber optic bronchoscopy, it is a must. And there is no fellowship to be accepted or uh, to, be, to, 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 to be dedicated as a thoracic anesthesiologist without the using or how to use the uh, fiber optic bronchoscopy. Of course, indication of lung isolation, even by use of double lumen tube or beta blocker, uh, there are a lot of indication. And sorry for the uh, crowdness of this slide. This is the only crowded one because a lot of indication had been mentioned. While we are using double lumen tube, it is mainly for the protection of one lung from contralateral contamination or soiling. This is the main or absolute indication for use of double lumen tube, bronchopleural fistula, bronchial disruption, and of course, pneumonectomy. Double lumen tube, you can be used or beta blocker. You prefer according to your technique or according to your experience in which Types in VATS, video assisted thoracic surgery, lobectomy, mediastinal mass, as we will mention here, surgical surgery and orthopedic procedure and neuroanesthesia in cases of managing or doing thoracic uh, spine cord injury or uh, discectomy or dealing with the spinal cord in the uh, dorsal uh, area, they prefer to. Uh, deflate uh, one of the lung. 
of course, in cases of minimally invasive cardiac surgery. Some of the specific indication is specifically for beta blocker preferred in cases of difficult airway. Difficult airways, I mean, which needs isolation. Uh, also in limited mouth opening as our case in awake or tracheal intubation. In uh, already intubated patient requiring lung isolation. In cases of uh, the patient who had tracheostomy and requiring lung isolation. And in cases of uh, selective lobar blockade like uh, upper lobe, uh, uh, lobar uh, uh, pneumonectomy or lobectomy. And uh, uh, while you are uh, intending for sending the patient postoperatively for mechanical ventilation, so no need to change for the tube because uh, this predisposes the patient for some sort of uh, hypoxemia or the patient may be uh, go, uh, he, he already uh, had uh, difficult intubation, so no need to change for the uh, double lumen tube while you are intending to uh, send the patient for mechanical ventilation post-operatively. As uh, uh, I mentioned, we have two types of uh, lung, lung isolation, either, uh, either the uh, left side or the uh, right side. The most common one is to use the left side. The rare one is for using of the right side double lumen tube and indicated in cases of distortion of anatomy of the left mainstream uh, bronchus in cases of laceration or uh, uh, in, in, in inflammation or uh, uh, accidents, for example, and uh, making some of distortion of the main left uh, mainstream bronchus, compression of the left mainstream bronchus from uh, descending aorta or from the tumor outside or inside uh, the left main bronchus, left lung transplantation, of course, and left side sleeve uh, operation and left side pneumonectomy. These are the uh, indication for using of the right side double lumen tube. And uh, most of the time, it is rare to use right-sided double lumen uh, tube. Here are some of the illustration of uh, the used double lumen tube. This is the conventional one. Here is the left side and here is the uh, right side with this uh, connection. And as you know, how to differentiate the right side from the left side by, of course, the direction, direction of the endobronchial end. This is uh, 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 number one. Number two is by the presence of the Murphy eye distally. Uh, this is uh, uh, the Murphy uh, eye for, for what? For the ventilation of the upper uh, right loop. Uh, so uh, this is the conventional uh, one. And before, in the last time, we had what is called Robert Shaw or uh, the, uh, if you remember, the old people like uh, me, they remember uh, what is called the Robert Shaw or the Carlin's tube, which was manufactured by the Rush. And we will see uh, as a historical, this type of uh, the tube. But this is the conventional one. And as I mentioned before, we should uh, recommend all the people or all the anesthetists interested in the field of the thoracic uh, anesthesia to uh, master using of the left endobronchial uh, tube. We have two uh, cuffs. This is the tracheal cuff, and this is the bronchial cuff. And remember, this is very important to avoid any complication or any uh, side effects by, from uh, inflation. This is the bronchial end is the capacity S2 to 3 uh, cc of air. And this is as usual as the uh, uh, tracheal cuff for the normal uh, one. So don't increase in the inflation of the bronchial end. And it is marked here with the blue. This is a bronchial one. And this is by the white with the uh, tracheal uh, one. This is regarding to the uh, endobronchial uh, tube. Uh, this is very important and uh, uh, very nice 
tube which is available in our series. All of the illustrated one, this is uh, available in our uh, theater and we are uh, using. This is called the dependent blocker with the tube. Be why it is dependent? Because you cannot take it out. This is the blocker, as you see here, it is inserted in the anterior shaft of this tube. And this tube is called univent tube with this obturator, with this uh, connection. So this connection is one way for the fiber optic bronchoscopy to ensure the insertion of the blocker in the desired side. And this is for the circuit and this is for the uh, tube. So this is called the torque, because we, you can manipulate by this wire, the torque uh, connection of the uh, blocker in the univent uh, tube. And we will see how to uh, insert and the technique to insert this uh, tube. And as we mentioned before, fiber optic is essential for insertion and for confirmation of the position of the uh, endobronchial uh, cuff. Another one, this is called Cohen blocker. This is from the internet and this is from our theater, the same. This is Cohen blocker and sometimes you cannot find this uh, blocker, but uh, it is very uh, lengthy and it is independent. What is meant by independent? It means that you can use the regular tube, single lumen tube, you, this is inserted in the single lumen tube by this uh, connection. This is called four uh, type connection. Uh, this uh, connection here for the circuit, here side for the insertion of the fiber optic bronchoscopy to adjust the and to direct for the insertion of the endobronchial side for the uh, blocking of the left or the right. And this is to connect to the uh, regular tube or single lumen tube. And another side for insertion of the Cohen blockers. And these Cohen blockers, you can direct <clears throat> the uh, direction of the uh, distal end by uh, this wheel after insertion and after seeing the uh, endobronchial uh, side you, uh, or end, you can direct by this wheel. This is very easy and you can block the right or the left. And at the end, at, at, after finishing this illustration, we will see the difference between each blockers and advantage, advantage between the uh, tube uh, double lumen and the blocker. This is very important. One which is the Fuji, Fuji one, the same like the previous one, the Cohen, but there is no wheel here. You can direct by manipulation and the same connection, the same connection for connection and the, you can direct. And the advantage of this Fuji, it is wide bore. You can use suction and insertion of oxygenation. This is the first one and the most common uh, blocker, bit, uh, uh, bronchial blockers, which is called Arnet. Arnet blocker. It is wired blocker and it is very difficult for insertion, except for the experienced people. And uh, you should in a seal or uh, this uh, making hanging with the uh, uh, fiber optic bronchoscopy in this uh, part, you insert the fiber optics through this hole and the arnet blocker from this one. And you can, uh, and you, you should insert the, the distal end of fiber optic bronchoscopy here in this wire and directed to be directed to the left or to the uh, uh, right side. All of these uh, blockers, the uh, distal or the cuff can accommodate, not like the uh, 
uh, the tube, it is accommodate up to seven ml of air. So it can accommodate more air than the endobronchial tube. This is fantastic blocker and we are uh, most commonly using this fantastic blocker, which is the ease blocker, EZ. It is called EZ, ease blocker. It is like riding horse. Look here, one left, one right, or one right, one left, according to your direction. And according to your direction, this, this blocker is directed uh, through the uh, fiber optic bronchoscopy also with this connection. And at this area, it is riding over the carina. So you can inflate and deflate lung by lung, one by one, according to your choice and according to uh, visualization by the fiber optic bronchoscopy. And here the cuff is, it is lined and one is plain according to the distal one. And it accommodates about six to seven ml. So this is fantastic and most common to be uh, used and very easy, very easy to be used. And the advantage is to inflate and deflate lung by lung. This is ease blocker. So this is, uh, these are the characteristic or the difference between each blocker, as you see here, most of them is nine French by Arnett blocker. It has small size one, so it can be used in children. So when you ask what are, the, what is the type uh, to be used in a children for beta blocker, for, for uh, uh, bronchial blocker, it is Arnett uh, blocker because it is very difficult to use uh, bronchial blockers in uh, children. The only one is the Arnett blockers. There are other techniques for the children by using the single lumen tube. We will not speak about, or we will, I'll speak very briefly for the uh, children. So the size is nine French, most of them, but an Arnett blocker we can uh, be used. Fuji, it has 4.5, but it is not uh, available most of the time. The Arnett blocker is available. What about the balloon uh, shape? It is spherical most of the time, but sometimes the uh, Arnett blocker can come with elliptical uh, one. The guiding one, as we mentioned, the Arnett blocker should be guided by the uh, wire, which is coupled with the fiber optic, the other one with the wheel, which is the cohen, and the Fuji is with the, uh, without, uh, 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 just by manual uh, direction. Uh, the, uh, the, the the most important one is a central channel in which the Fuji uh, uni blocker is uh, more wider, so uh, it is available for suction uh, better than the others and for application of the supplemental supplemental oxygenation for the uh, independent lung. These are the difference between the uh, blockers. Uh, regarding to uh, how to uh, apply for the uh, double lumen tube, and as I mentioned, it is the left side to be uh, mustered. Patient on the table should be in the supine position, and the whole table is down while you are holding the fiber optic uh, bronchoscopy. Uh, and after insertion, uh, uh, now, forget of the fiber optic bronchoscopy, but should be prepared. Now you are holding the uh, double lumen tube by your hand as usual for intubation. And after reaching for the uh, carina, you directed the uh, double lumen tube 90 degree to the left side and advance it until it stopped. No, no more advancement. And it is approximately from the lens from the, oh, there are a lot of formula to fix uh, the lens uh, according to the patient and the lens of the patient, male or female, but most commonly 29 centimeters from the oral cavity or 28 uh, from uh, the oral cavity to be uh, fixed. And after that, 
uh, while table is down, most down, and you are holding the fiber optic bronchoscopy, uh, the fiber optic bronchoscopy should be straightforward, straight. Don't make bending for the fiber optic bronchoscopy because it is fiber optic as you at it is name. So break down of the fibers can happen while you are holding the fiber optic bronchoscopy and while storing, it should be straight. So you are holding the fiber optic bronchoscopy and go through the uh, tracheal uh, part and to the uh, bronchial part to confirm the position as we will mention here. Like this, the optimal position of the left side, you will see here from the tracheal lumen of the unobstructed entrance of the right main uh, uh, bronchus. Here, you will see view from the tracheal of the lumen of the right upper bronchus. You will see here, this is B, view from the bronchial lumen of the left upper and left lower this is the uh, below. What you will see here while you are going through the uh, tracheal uh, lumen, you should see what is called rim, rim of the uh, bronchial uh, balloon. If you don't see the rim, so it is deeply inserted. And this is very dangerous for tracheal injury or bronchial injury. And if it, if, if it is more than the rim up, so it may be dislodged while you are positioning for uh, the uh, patient. And this sign in the right side, it is called Mercedes sign, as you see here, like Mercedes car. So this is a confirmation of the left-sided double human tube. How to apply or the technique for placement of the RNET blocker. As I mentioned, this is the four connection here, connecting for the tube itself. And as we mentioned before, it is a single lumen tube, okay? And one here going for circuit. And this is for fiber optic. And we recommend to use the small size fiber optic bronchoscopy, 4.2 millimeter or pediatric one. And here is the RNET blocker. As you see here, there is a wire. And this fiber optic is coupled with the wire and advanced. And in this technique, uh, you need some of the assistant. You have assistant, you have the fellow, you have senior registrar or your residence, uh, uh, fellow in the thoracic anesthesia and advance. While you are advancing this fiber optic from this hole, it is advanced already with the wire. One of the trick here, you should lubricate very well the uh, blocker to go smoothly through the uh, tube. While you are reaching for the desired uh, side, you can insert and you see the rim. In, in this side, I think it is it needs some of the more insertion because it is herniated. Here it is herniated in the uh, right main uh, stem block. Okay. This will be, uh, it needs some of the experience, but it will be easy by the time to be uh, applied. And as I mentioned before, it, it, it is used also in cases of pediatric. Uh, we have in our uh, hospital, uh, what is called the thoracic anesthesia teaching board, because we have uh, the uh, fellowship of the anesthesia and we recognize uh, thoracic workshop uh, of anesthesia and we have this board which has uh, uh, many of the uh, endobronchial tube and the blockers and it is it, as I told you before these are the red one is the historical one which is the uh, Robert Shaw uh, 
uh, tubes and one is not is missing here which is called the car lens it has a hook here to be rested or riding over the carina it was very bad because most of the time it stimulates for the carina and stimulate uh, the patient uncomfortable so uh, uh, all of the tube are represented here with some of the uh, uh, blockers and as you see here, there is, uh, uh, of course, you need this, is, you know, this is the ambu back. And this one is the an instrument, which is CPAP. This is an instrument, which is the CPAP, because after insertion of the endobronchial tube, double lumen tube, we can supply oxygen for the dependent and independent, or for the sound and the diseased lung. The diseased is the dependent one. Left the cubicles position, for example, the left is up, uh, or the left is down and the right is up, or the left is down and the right is up, according to the position. So applying for CPAP for the operating lung, CPAP, and applying for beep, applying for beep for the uh, dependent lung, which is the sound lungs to for a trial to prevent the uh, mismatch okay ventilation uh, mismatch perfusion mismatch uh, anybody remember this an instrument of course i work it with this an instrument but not available nowadays this is the for injection or insufflation or local uh, insufflation in the uh, larynx or the wall of passing through the larynx to the wall of the trachea. This is the filled with lidocaine to make local anesthesia for the trachea to prevent any stress for the patient, but not available uh, uh, nowadays. So this is present in our university while it is teaching for the uh, fellow to know the history and the different types of the uh, endobronchial tube. What are the advantage of the uh, double lumen tubes uh, and the bronchial blockers? Of course, the, uh, uh, the, the, the most important and the uh, most common use is the left double lumen tube. And the advantage it has, of course, large lumen for suctioning and for ventilation best advice for indication for separation. And you can convert from two to one lung ventilation and back very uh, easy. Uh, but the disadvantage in cases of tracheobronchial uh, injury and the damage to the tracheal cuff during uh, intubation. And sometimes it is very uh, difficult to select for the proper uh, size. Uh, according to the, 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 the bulk of the uh, double lumen tube and the uh, outer diameter is very big, so sometimes it is difficult to place during laryngoscopy. Uh, and we recommend for uh, the uh, uh, to use the uh, size of uh, 35 French for female and 37 French for uh, male. No more to use 41 or 39 for a uh, patient for uh, separation because it had been found there is no difference for use of this, but for using of the smaller size to prevent more injury and uh, it gets the same uh, uh, results for isolation. Of course, the bronchial blockers, it is uh, no need to, uh, the, the most important and the most uh, uh, yes, the most important and the most advantage uh, of uh, the uh, end of, uh, of the blockers is uh, to uh, be used in cases of the patient went to the ICU for for ventilation, just to remove the uh, uh, bronchial blockers and leave the single lumen tube for uh, ventilation. Uh, so it, this is very important advice to not to change for the double lumen uh, tube. 
And in case of difficult intubation, in case of difficult intubation for the patient needs for isolation, you can use uh, 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 bronchial uh, uh, blockers, but it needs uh, some of the high maintenance uh, to manipulate and to isolate for the lung. Let us come to our case. And uh, uh, this case had been done, as I mentioned before, and just to uh, remind you by the, this picture I had uh, presented before in the beginning of my presentation, this is a very huge uh, tumor. Uh, in this case, we uh, managed this uh, case according to the uh, next strategy. And we did about 15 days back. Of course, we went through uh, these uh, six strategies. The first one is a preoperative preparation. We know that the patient has had factor seven deficiency. So we request for the uh, communication with the blood bank to prepare for, uh, for uh, six, six, uh, strategy of six, 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 and specifically the uh, factor uh, seven to be uh, available. Six units of RPCs, six units of rich frozen plasma, six units of platelet, like uh, we are preparing in cases of placenta accreta or placenta. Uh, yes, in, in case of uh, placenta accreta, which is a horrible uh, situation. So we prepare this for the blood, and of course, and the uh, requested all of the investigations and the blood work in the uh, anesthesia uh, clinic. And uh, the, our uh, senior registrar, he, he uh, wrote uh, such sentences, general anesthesia, induction of intravenous, uh, oral endotracheal uh, tube. We need hematology consultation, optimization, and his altered coagulation profile and factor seven to be available. We need cardiology consultation and the clearance in view of the tumor causing cardiac compression. We need endocrine consultation because the patient had, uh, he did uh, adrenalectomy since long uh, time and we will review uh, this patient uh, later. Of course, we send the patient for the hematology consultation and for endocrine and for cardiology. And here is the uh, recommendation for the endocrine. He uh, requested uh, the uh, synactin test. As you, uh, this, this this is a very specific test for the adrenal gland. Well, uh, for the adrenal, yes, working or not, uh, by giving of synactin and to see the reflex between or the interaction between the pituitary and the adrenal, and to see the secretion of the cortisol uh, level and the family instructed about this uh, case. Regarding to the hematology, uh, as he, the patient, he has a factor sev uh, seven deficiency. Uh, they, uh, this level came back to 22%, which is not too low to expect any spontaneous bleeding. So they suggested the following. Inherited, it is inherited uh, case. And uh, they give uh, the patient intravenous uh, uh, vitamin K, which is vitamin K uh, uh, dependent. And the level after giving vitamin uh, K is still low if, the, if this factor is low. So they will receive a Novo 730 mic per kg per dose before surgery. Regarding to the cardiology, and as I mentioned in the previous lecture, they, uh, uh, they, uh, they are very uh, calm and they are very uh, cute for managing of such cases. Um, because uh, this case from the CT, it resembles that there is invasion for the superior vena cava or there is encroachment on the heart. So, uh, 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 although they wrote low risk patient going for high risk procedure, and this is the first time to see this high risk even in the procedure. So thank you for the for writing high risk procedure. Nothing to be done preoperative from cardiac standpoint, of course, 
and close monitoring post operative. Thank you so much for the uh, cartridge. Regarding to the anesthesia plan, and only the active issues had been mentioned with anticipated difficult airways, maybe uncontrolled bleeding intraoperative. So we prepared also what is called level one. Level one, it is an instrument which give one liter of fluid or blood in one minute. In case of catastrophe, you will see later here what will be the catastrophe. We strongly recommend this case to be done in cardiac or along with cardiac surgeon and cardiac perfusionist to be ready for cardiac bypass. And the patient need maximal stabilization from hematology. We will follow uh, uh, this, pa this patient uh, later. And thank you for writing what is called the cardiology because of the second item is the teamwork consultation. We consulted all the people and we consulted the uh, cardiac anesthetist intraoperatively with preparation of the cardiopulmonary bypass because at any time, horrible bleeding or injury for big vessels or even one of the chamber of the heart may predispose a patient for a rest intraoperatively. And by the way, the consent for this patient had been written as a very high risk consent up to this on the table. And he signed with his relative about this consent. So we requested for the presence of the cardiac perfusionist and the cardiac anesthetist and the cardiac surgeon. And they already, we didn't start without the presence of this of this uh, team and they were ready for the cannulation uh, for uh, cardiac uh, bypass. So it is very important for the teamwork consultation. And fortunately, we didn't need these uh, people and the uh, uh, operation went, uh, alhamdulillah, very smoothly. Of course, monitoring, as the advice of the cardiology, we monitor the patient by everything, and we have what is called root monitoring and by spectral index of code we monitored. And the problem was uh, the vascular axis. Why? In this case, it was a, a problem because, unfortunately, the patient received chemotherapy and they applied pick line in the right uh, anticubital vein. So uh, extravasation occurred and swelling and cellulites of the right arm uh, happened. So it uh, affected for the patient. And patient went for marasmus and uh, uh, lost his uh, uh, about 22 kg in two months. Uh, there was a difficulty in access of the uh, vascular uh, access venous, I mean the venous uh, access and uh, uh, of course uh, from the CT uh, uh, there was a possibility of uh, uh, superior vena cava obstruction syndrome and so we uh, uh, we tried for the peripheral but we reached for the uh, peripheral one on the uh, left side of the arm and uh, we tried in the leg we failed but after sleeping of the patient we inserted femoral vein and also femoral uh, uh, artery. Regarding to the uh, anesthesia and lung isolation, we use what is called the uh, ease blocker. And as I mentioned before, uh, uh, how was the technique? Now you uh, knew the technique, how to insert it, the uh, bronchial blockers. We used the uh, ease blocker. Why we used ease blocker? Because we have um, a plan for post-operative ventilation. So the, this patient post-operatively, he went for uh, ventilation post-operatively for, for, for five days post-operative uh, 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 ventilation until the lung had been inflated and returned to the back by about 80%. Uh, percent. And the patient is extubated and uh, uh, alhamdulillah, he went uh, for uh, home. Regarding to the post-operative uh, pain uh, management, it was a challenging for us. We didn't insert the epidural for this patient. 
thoracic epidural. We didn't or uh, paravertebral uh, catheter. Why? Of course, because he has bleeding tendency and coagulopathy because he has factor seven deficiency. So it is contraindicated in such case. So we used uh, 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 usual post-operative uh, pain relief, specifically the patient was ventilated for five uh, days. So if I ask one of uh, us, uh, can we use uh, PCA for this patient? Of course, no, because the patient was ventilated. Okay. This is the picture of the operation. This is the incision, thoracic incision. And the, the surgeon here, the thoracic surgeon, he went to uh, excise the tumor blindly because it is very huge. And he was brave enough to take the tumor uh, out. And after taking the tumor, out, as you see here, this was very horrible. This is a vena cava after taking out of the tumor. And this is the size of the tumor. Imagine how much it was. And after excision of uh, the tumor, the patient, as I mentioned, he went for uh, post-operative uh, ventilation for five days and extubated, and he went home after uh, that. Uh, uh, we came now to uh, the uh, conclusion of this uh, presentation. And uh, regarding to the conclusion, the choice of the lung isolation device, according to your experience or your preference, or according to the indication, or according to the uh, patient status. So you can use double lumen or uh, uh, bronchial blockers according to the indication we mentioned before. Uh, usually, we are using 35 French or 37 French for female and 37 for uh, males. And according to uh, and regarding to the fixation or the depth of the uh, double lumen tube, according to many formulas, but most commonly it is confirmed by the fiber optics. That's why the fiber optic bronchoscopy is a must. Please, it is a must. Don't go for the thoracic theater without mastering the use of fiber optic bronchoscopy. And all of us, or most of us, we are using fiber optic bronchoscopy in cases of awake intubation. That's why it will be easy for mastering in uh, uh, the uh, confirmation of the double lumen tube. And regarding to the fiber optic bronchoscopy, you are using was the patient in. If the, regarding to this case, it was in the supine position. So no need for deflation or inflation or putting the patient in the lateral decubitus position. But in cases of putting the patient in case uh, of uh, uh, decubitus position, you should confirm first in the supine position. After that, deflating the cuff and putting the patient on the uh, lateral position and after that inflating and recheck again with the fiber optic bronchoscopy. This is the rule in case of confirmation of the double lumen tube or the uh, 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 bronchial. Uh, one of the important issue in cases of deflation of the lung or strategy of ventilation of the uh, uh, lung isolation is to use the uh, uh, permissive hypercapnia or to use low, card, low, low tidal volume technique, uh, four to six or four to five ml per kg uh, tidal volume with 100% of oxygenation, not to give chance for any hypoxemia to happen during ventilation or isolation, because most of the time these technique is VATS, video assisted thoracic surgery. So it will not take uh, much time. So there is no harm or a fear of using of 100% oxygenation. Uh, also for rapid deflation, rapid deflation by double lumen tube, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to be deflated completely for the comfortability of the surgeon. And we are cooperative in the theater not to uh, be an enemy with the surgeon. We are making every everything to for the best outcome for the patient. So we are deflating for the uh, uh, 
uh, independent uh, lung by uh, suctioning uh, by uh, deflate by suctioning by giving low tidal volume and by clamping of the uh, desired deflated uh, lung. Uh, of course, don't uh, forget uh, for vigorous uh, insertion of the uh, bronchial end of the double lung tube because uh, tracheobronchial injury, it is seldom, but may happen at any time. And this is very dangerous, may predispose the patient uh, was, uh, for opening or sorocotomy. And we nowadays, it is very seldom to do sorocotomy. Most of the cases are rats. Regarding to the home message, uh, this is regarding to uh, not for this uh, case or, the, or, or, or uh, but it is regarding for uh, any cases in the uh, field of uh, the anesthesia. All of us, we know the two hands better than one hand, but specifically in some of speciality, we need two hands uh, specifically for such cases, specifically for, as we uh, mentioned, uh, uh, by communicating uh, with the other specialities are the, like the cardiac surgeon and perfusionist and the cardiac anesthetist. And it is not shameful. Uh, I, I always say, it is not shameful to call for help even while you are seniors, don't, because we are dealing with a human being. Uh, in the Western, they are uh, uh, not able to, to, to call for help for the animals, but we are dealing with the human being. So it is very important to call most of the time for uh, help because in your theater, uh, there are a lot of people expert in some of the specialities, and you will be lucky enough to work in the big centers, to see people who are expert and you call them, it is not shameful. Uh, you should have plans. You should have A plan and B plan. As applied here for this case, we had uh, A plan and the B plan for cardiopulmonary bypass. So you should have, all the time you should have a uh, plan. And at the end, you should thank and appreciate the work of the uh, cooperative uh, people uh, around uh, you. Uh, and uh, we should mention all the time uh, the, to be humble all uh, the time, because كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة البقرة سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت Al Alim Al Hakim. Uh, at the end, I'd like to thank all the people attending the syndicate of the Manufaya. Uh, my uh, dearest uh, sister and uh, uh, my dearest uh, uh, professor, uh, Dr. Safa, who is working and he, she is making. Uh, a very important uh, issue in the field of the continuous medical education. And I'd like to thank uh, uh, the time of uh, Dr. Yasser Zagalul. No I know problem. Very no problem, but we have, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Hassan. But we have also, no, I'd, like, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the syndicate of the Monofeya and uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Walid Al Habashi, he is a consultant of uh, the anesthesia in uh, England, uh, but he has uh, other uh, skills in the field of the technology. Thank you, Dr. Walid, and thank for uh, all the attendees. Thank you so much. Are you, uh, uh, we have many questions. Yeah. Just, just a few seconds, few seconds. Okay. Shukran, so Dr. Shukran, Dr. Hassan. Hello, Dr. Hassan. Hello, Dr. Hassan. Hello, Dr. Hassan. Dr. Hassan, Dr. Hassan, I don't know what to say about you. I mean, it's an exceptional thing. And I mean, if you have a chance to say that you were going to say that ما كنتش بتقول محاضرة وأنا شخصيا استفدت جدا جدا أقسم بالله العظيم حاجة جميلة 
إيه انتوا بصراحة مشرفيني جدا ومنوريني جدا وكتر خيركم كتر خير حضرتك كتر خير إيه خير دكتور ياسر إيه حضراتكم عظماء قوي 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 وأصحاب أيادي عليا قوي قوي ربنا يديمها عليكم نعمة إيه بشكر طبعا دكتور وليد الابن العالي الغالي العزيز الرائع والمبهر في التكنولوجيا بتاعته أه بشكر كل الناس الحضور يعني many many thanks for all attendees you uh, great honor for me uh, to have uh, all of this number nobody leaves the lecture from uh, uh, the start till now many many thanks Dr. Isam uh, my uh, great uh, friend and my great brother thank you thank you Dr. Isam okay. Dr. Yasser it's yours Okay, we go ahead now for the questions. We have a lot of questions. Dr. Asab, are you ready? Ready, inshallah. All right, okay. Actually, I, I will organize the questions according to the stages of anesthesia. So there is two questions about why we assess the airway is difficult, why it is minimum battery. Yes, uh, this patient, it is, uh, uh, had been uh, assessed in the pre-anesthesia clinic and by our registrar, uh, the patient uh, airway was uh, uh, parampatisy. It is not related to the mass? No, 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 no. It is All usually. right, okay. No. What very about small, the Very small, uh, very small uh, mouse opening and the parampatisy, not related okay. to the mass. Okay. Yes. Because I saw the X-ray, it is centered the trachea, and there is no comparison in the trachea and chest X-ray that you show us. Anyway, what about the induction of anesthesia of this case? Did you find any difficulty? No, there is no difficult in uh, induction of anesthesia. As usual, we used the propofol, fentanyl, and uh, uh, rucronium, and uh, we were ready with a vasoactive. Uh, uh, agents, uh, phenylephrine and uh, ephedrine, in cases of uh, severe hypotension. All right. But we didn't, we didn't use, we didn't use. All right. Two questions about the ventilation from Dr. Asma and Dr. Hasna. Did you find any difficulty in ventilation during the surgery? Okay. In this case, as I mentioned, the uh, left lung was normal, completely normal. So we deflated from the start. As you are deflating the lung from the start, you can use the uh, low tidal volume technique and permissive hypercapnia and no uh, difficulty in case of uh, ventilation. All right. Any compression in superior vena cava or inferior vena cava yes. affecting the venous return? Yes, yes, of course. Oh. I oh. mentioned that the patient received, unfortunately, the uh, in the uh, right of his arm uh, chemotherapy and cellulites and extravasation happened besides superior vena cava obstruction. That's why we didn't apply any uh, central vein in the neck. We applied femoral cannulation. And the regarding to the cardiac surgeon and perfusionist, they were ready for the uh, cannulation from the uh, femoral side. We applied arterial from the femoral and also for uh, the uh, venous under ultrasonography. All right, okay, okay. So even if it is mainly on the right side, is it possible to do it from the left side, internal jugular or subclavian, or what do you think? From internal, it will go uh, directly to the right side uh, uh, at the end, to the uh, uh, jugular, to the to the uh, uh, right side. So the fade will be to the supervena cava. So we avoided left or right side. Correct, here. Yeah. Correct, correct. Dr. Asma has an interested case, child 10 years uh, old, with huge interior mediastinal mass and causing compression in the heart and causing cardiac tamponade. What is the best for induction or in management in general, in your experience? Send to our center. <laughs> it is almost the same. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in children, there are a lot of uh, challenging. Uh, the, the child itself, if he is going for a simple uh, surgery, it is very challenging. Uh, besides this mediastinal mass, it is horrible. We should communicate all the time again with the other specialty, you should communicate with the uh, cardiac surgeon. This is number uh, one. You should uh, 
uh, use uh, 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 two hands better than two uh, than one hand. You should have other experts, people, initiators, uh, because all the time you will be busy with managing of the patient, and you expect anything in this child. And the best one, the best thing to isolate for this uh, a child is the RNET blocker, because the other blockers they are big sized. You cannot isolate for the child. All right. Dr. Khaled Yassin asking about the factor seven low activity. I think the hematologist wrote his comment in three points. You may summarize it for Dr. Khaled again. Yes, uh, the uh, 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 hematologist, he recommended to uh, use vitamin K before uh, the operation. And if, uh, uh, and he found that it reaches about 22, 22% from uh, the base uh, line. And he recommended that this is acceptable for the operation and no need for uh, giving uh, factor uh, seven. And if it is less, he will uh, give uh, 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 dose with uh, 20 or 30 mic per kg. Uh, before uh, the operation, uh, and 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 we requested six 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 units right. for this patient for any availability of uh, hemorrhage, which is expected. Why was it? Why was any it low, uh, Professor uh, Sam? Why was it low? What's the reason behind the low? It's inherited. It is inherited, Doctor Yasser. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's inherited. It is not uh, due to any uh, uh, pathology, but it is inherited when, unfortunately for us, it is discovered and uh, accidentally. Yeah, it is a very difficult case, really. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. So yeah but uh, uh, 20, 27% is, um, is low and it might need uh, supplementation. Did you use any factor uh, seven during the perioperative period? We didn't use uh, at all. Because my first time uh, to encounter such uh, events with the uh, coagulation factors was in Edinburgh when we were doing a liver transplant and we had a hemophilia patient going for liver transplant. I was at the beginning frightened, uh, but they told me that factor eight was 20% and the blood bank will continue supporting us throughout the liver transplant by supplying us with a, a factor eight throughout the surgery. Yeah. But yeah. maybe because we are a prolonged surgery can take about 10 hours. Maybe how long was your surgery? Five hours. Five hours. And post-operative, the factor seven was not low? Uh, we uh, monitor the patient post-operatively in the uh, ICU, but infrequently, Dr. Khaled, but it, it, it took over by the uh, intensive, co uh, intensive care uh, uh, team, and uh, really, uh, uh, I didn't follow uh, uh, regarding to the uh, transfusion of uh, the blood post-operative uh, in the ICU. I, Thank you very much. Thank you so I, much. I followed the patient uh, uh, regarding to uh, the ventilation or uh, other uh, uh, issues, but regarding to the uh, hematology issue, uh, uh, really and honestly, I didn't follow uh, uh, what was going on in the ICU. All right. Dr. Wadin Del Habashi is asking about the hypoxemia with one lung anesthesia and how we can... Did you have it intraoperative, Dr. Asam first? Okay, hypoxemia and uh, hypoxic uh, 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 vasoconstriction. You mean like this, uh, Dr. Walid. And as early as you are uh, isolating uh, uh, the lung and preventing soiling uh, from uh, the... Uh, 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 lung or from the operating uh, lung, you don't have, you have no uh, chance for uh, hypoxemia or it is, it will be minimal. And as I mentioned, in cases of thoracic with isolation and specifically in short time period, you should use FiO2 100 from uh, the start. And in the independent one, you are using CPAP. Uh, and in the depending one, you are using PEEP to overcome for this uh, hypoxemia. But the chance for hypoxemia may aggravated by the soiling, may aggravated by pre, uh, de, uh, positioning 
uh, malpositioning of the endobronchial tube or the uh, blocker, or maybe aggravating by uh, reducing the FiO2. And no, no need to uh, decrease uh, the FiO2 to 50% or 30% or something like that. Uh, thanks a lot, Professor Ali, if you allow me uh, to answer. Uh, actually, it, as you know, in the MD, if you do cardiothoracic anesthesia, it's, it's a special entity to ask about all lung ventilation and hypoxemia and how you treat that in a stepwise approach. So if I'm putting the priority for my patient, the patient starts to desaturate either gradually or suddenly, how in a stepwise fashion in my mindset, what I'm going to do first and then second and then third and fourth, so starting by increasing the FIT, which every one of us is doing, until ligation of the pulmonary artery. So what is the stepwise approach in a simple fashion to our attendees here to make it that question without prior doing any thoracic anesthesia? Thank you, much, and thanks for that excellent talk. Another issue, Dr. Walid, uh, this case was in the supine position also. And most commonly to uh, notice this hypoxemia because of ventilation perfusion mismatch in the left decubitus position. So this case was in the supine position, no chance for the gravity to play a role in this such case. Okay. Uh, do you have any abnormal bleeding during the surgery, Dr. Hassan? Of course, yes. We, yeah. How uh, much your blood we use, if, if we, we, uh, the, the, patient, the patient lost about four liters in this operation. That's why we transfused the blood while uh, before even his the surgeon was manipulating because he has already low hemoglobin uh, level. He went for the theater as not emergency, but uh, 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 semi-emergency uh, case. So his hemoglobin was nine. So we started to uh, transfuse for this patient as he started for the uh, incision and we were re ready all the time by level one because we expect, expected that this tumor was invading major vessels or was compressing on the major vessel while he, the surgeon, was manipulating on the blindly. As you said in the slide, he was very grave and our heart stopped at this uh, time because he was very grave to manipulate uh, blindly for this tumor. So we expected at any time uh, injury for uh, superior vena cava or major vessels. That's why the cardiac surgeon was standby, the perfusionist was standby, and we were connecting the our uh, line with uh, level one infusion. All right. How many hours the surgery? Five. Oh, five hours, right. yeah. five hours, yeah. and this is very clever surgeon. Otherwise, yeah. we may spend till the end of the day. Okay, yeah. Any comment from anybody? Yeah, okay. could I ask about the uh, yeah uh, the level one? Where was it connected? The level one was it connected? Because uh, usually used to use the level one in liver transplants, and we we have it in Manufia. We actually have two there. It's very yeah. essential in major surgeries like this. But uh, we connected to trauma kit. Uh, uh, because it has to have a wide caliber. Where did you, you, you mentioned your venous access was femoral. Uh, the... Yes, yes, Dr. Yasser, even in the peripheral, we are connecting the level one. While we are using, even in the, uh, even in 18 gauge, we can use the level one in the peripheral. But in this case, we were connecting in the femoral one. All right. Yeah. And what did because you have in you the femoral? Know, because the CVP? Because, sorry? Uh, what, what line was inserted in the femur? Uh, yes, CVB. All right. Yes. Dr. Asafa, any comment? Open your mic. Open your mic. Sound, yes. Yeah. Everything uh. is okay. Hadrake, it's fadal, Dr. Yasser. It's fadal, Hadrake, Fanny. Everything is okay. Fadal. Okay. I, hope, I hope, Dr. Yasser, to listen from my junior colleagues, I hope, I hope any question because most of the uh, oral exam, such cases, you will be asked in, 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 in such cases. So if anybody interested and wants to ask me any questions, I am ready. Yes, 
because I, 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 I hope to get benefit for uh, uh, the people and no shameful, by the way, no shameful. I'll mention something in the conference while I was uh, a, a resident and I attended with my big professors. Uh, uh, I remember my big professor, uh, Professor Asqalani, uh, Professor Muhammad Shaker. And uh, I, I, I was lucky enough to attend such conferences. I was about to ask one question and I was shameful. How to ask in, in, in presence of such legends people. And after a while, I found other professors asking the same question. So please, no shameful, no shameful to ask. All of us, we are learning here. All of us, we are learning here. And I myself, I get every day benefit, even from my juniors. Dr. Hassan, you mentioned, you mentioned yeah, one, there is one more question Shaker. from me. Just last one question. Dr. Amani Saeed asking why it was done by blind technique. Actually, I didn't understand the question. He, she, 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 uh, she wants to mention why the surgeon is blind. I asked ah, the same, I asked it, I asked the same question for the surgeon. Why yeah. you are putting your hand like this? He said to me, don't worry. This is my oh. answer. He was no, confident no, enough. He was, no, 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 no. He was confident enough. Okay, okay, it's fine. For me, just a comment. If you do this case again, you will do something more or the same technique? Well, it's the same, Dr. Yes. What do you think? No, I'm asking you. We did our technique. best. We prepared the patient. We did our best. And the outcome of the patient is okay, alhamdulillah. So we did our best. Uh, and, and your questions and your comments may add for me uh, but uh, uh, if this case uh, uh, came uh, again, I think if come again, uh, we will do the same uh, protocol. Well done. By the way, I, 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 I should mention one important issue here, uh, uh, the presence of our professor, Abdul Azim al-Dawlatli, in the theaters, it gives us the whole confidence the whole trust the, he has a back bo, he, he is considered the uh, back support for us he is very expert he uh, he, he support us all the time and he is mon uh, yani mastering such case like the best in the world really the best in the world oh uh, Dr. Han is asking, yeah. Yeah. you want to finish, Dr. Safa? Sorry, you want to finish? Because there is still one question more. No, no, no. I, 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 just, just a comment, Dr. just a comment. Dr. Han is asking why the patient is ventilated for five days. What was the difficulty to wean him? For ventilation of the lung. Every now, every, we, 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 the ICU people, they were uh, following the patient by X-ray and uh, to see the lung inflation until 80% of the lung inflated yeah. and returned back, they exhibited the patient. Yeah, because long time ventilation or long time ventilation after thoracic surgery may be predisposed to the bronchopleural vistula. But anyway, it was exhibited without but, problem, yeah. But, this, but, but in this major case, we should not hurry in uh, weaning of the patient. You, you should give the patient time for optimal for optimal uh, pulmonary function and for optimal condition for the patient to be extubated. All right. Okay. Nothing from my side. And, uh, can I add something uh, which I really liked when Professor uh, uh, Samman mentioned? Yes, we are. Uh, we owe a lot. We owe a lot to our professors, where we learned a lot from them. Harak, you mentioned Professor Shaker. Professor Shaker was the first one who introduced us to the international community. We used to go to Hilton Ramses in Cairo and meet all the international speakers in Cairo. And I may I remember Yasser Zaghloul used to come with me there. And it was very interesting to see the people. Professor Dawletli, a very big figure name in thoracic anesthesia, uh, an Egyptian ambassador in Saudi Arabia, really. Beautiful work he's doing in, in King Khaled Hospital. My um, regards to him. And of course, I have to mention uh, Taban Walid Habashi. Walid Habashi is doing great job. When I was in the UK in 1992, 
uh, all the best I can do, we didn't have this technology, is to ask, uh, uh, help my colleagues from Egypt to come and get into jobs in the UK, to join the jobs. Most of them are working now in jobs and they reach to be head of departments, like Amr Mahdi in, uh, in Aberdeen, like uh, Ashraf Abdel Fattah now in, uh, in Birmingham, like Ahmed Rifat from Munufiya working, Ahmed Rifat is working as a consultant in London, but Walid Habashi, with the new technology, took us, uh, uh, and Saad Mahdi, took us into a new era, which is the Zoom, Zoom communication through the, uh, through the cor uh, corona pandemic. So I really have to thank the new generation for this. Which is important, very important. Dr. Safa, I'd, like, I'd, like, I'd like to comment, Dr. Khaled, I'd like to comment on your uh, this valuable comment. I think that Dr. Walid Habashi and uh, Professor Saad Mahdi, specifically, they are doing a very great job. They are doing a marvelous job, and this will be sadaqa lahum fi dunya wa fil akhira because they are doing. Uh, continuous medical education freely. This is freely. No payment. The knowledge, it came to us freely. And I'd like to thank also to know the subspeciality people in the field of anesthesia, like Professor Muhammad Abdul Latif, Professor Khalid Yassin in the field of uh, liver. Professor uh, Yasser Zaghloul for intensive care and pain management, Dr. Uh, 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 Walid Habashi in intensive care, expert man in ex intensive care. And lastly, my great sister, Professor uh, Safa for obstetric. The, obstetric. the obstetric. And she has, by the way, all people they should know she has uh, she owns a hospital and she has a lot of money. Junior staff, junior staff, for all of them. Uh, I worked through in England and I worked in Saudi Arabia, but I picked up 11 years where I worked in National Liver Institute in Manufayat. لازم انا اعبر عن تحياتي وتقدير لكل الشباب المعيدين والنواب في جامعه المنوفيه اللي في خلال 11 سنه فقط وي وركت ان منوفيه وي هاد 40 بابليكيشنز انترناشونال اند تو شابترز ناو وان ان كينجز كوليدج اند وان ان تكساس يونيفرستي مش ممكن وي ويل نيفر هاف دون ذس ورك ويز اوت ذا اونستي اوف ذا ستاف وركينج ان ذا ناشونال ليفر انستيتيوت ا ا تيم ورك اوف ريسيرشرز ريزيدنس اند ريجسترز who did their job on a very high standard level and honest. And I remember one, one doctor did her MS thesis. And when she was about to finish her MS thesis and she knows her name, she missed one variable in her study. She had to repeat the whole MS thesis. And she was happy to repeat it. Because as you said, Dr. Isam, this is sadaqa gariya wa ilmi yuntafa bih. That's what we're trying to do in the eyes of the people and the people. إن لازم البحث اللي انتوا بتعملوه للماجستير او الدكتوراه ده مش عقاب ده انت بتستفيد بيه لو اتنشر انترناشونال سيذكرك العالم من بعدها فا اتس فيري جود اند انترستنج يا شباب ساهموا معانا في الحوار ده واحنا بنشكركم جدا وربنا يوفقكم انتوا المستقبل دكتور ياسر بعد اذن حضرتك <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Yesik. Uh, allow me to say that in, uh, we must continue this program. It is not competitive, the competition with any uh, from uh, the big program, uh, programs like Dr. Saad Mahdi or Dr. Walid. We are run in the same way to have the uh, end beautiful result, to have more science distributed to all juniors in our, uh, in our uh, country. Uh, please help me, please support me. I need you, I need you much more. Please, uh, uh, if any uh, from the big professors can join us, please allow that for me. Uh, really, I thank uh, Dr. Uh, all the professor, all the great professor in my uh, scientific uh, committee of Nufaya group. Please, I beg you, 
to support me more Dr. and more. Walid, uh, Dr. Asafa, Dr. Walid, he wants to do a small comment before you closing the meeting. I, and I, I don't close the meeting now. No, no, no. I will not close the meeting now. <laughs> yeah, please allow me. Please allow me. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 اللي بيبقى فيه ناس اللانجوج بتاعتهم بتبقى صعبه شويه، الكوميونيكيشن بتاعنا بيبقى صعب معاهم شويه، احنا الحقيقه هي يعني يعني اقدر اقول ان هو يعني ا فاميلي جاذرنج وان شاء الله يكمل على كده طول الوقت يعني، وانا مش هنهي طبعا الميتنج قبل ما حضراتكم لو يبقى فيه كومنتس او يبقى فيه كلمه كويسه بمناسبة العام الجديد وكل يعني كل سنة وانتم طيبين وبألف خير وسعادة فحضراتكم يعني لازم تقولوا لنا كلمة كده ومش هنقفل اللقاء دلوقتي دكتور ياسر بعد إيه؟ أحب أحب أقول حاجة لكل الحاضرين أنا بشكر جامعة المنوفية وبشكر نقابة المنوفية وبشكر رابطة المنوفية ودي خطوة جميلة جدا 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 يا رب كل الجامعات تحزو حزوها وان شاء الله زي ما قلت العلم اللي بيقدم هذه صدقه جاريه وبدون اي فيس وبدون اي مقابل لا نبغى فيها الا وجه الله وان شاء الله ربنا يجعله في ميزان حسناتك يا دكتوره صفاء وكل المشاركين وكل الحاضرين وجزاكم الله خير وكل عام وانتم بخير وان شاء الله منتظر انا شخصيا بحب جدا 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 دكتور خالد ياسين ومحاضراته الرائعه الرائعه غير عادي من مارس من غير عادي الدكتور ياسر زغلول اتحفنا بمحاضراته وهيقول لانه في جعبته الكثير الدكتور وليد ده اللي مش عايز اقول الصاعد الواعد المتوعد الجبار الاسد الشديد جدا اللي هو مشرفنا في كل مكان في العالم وشيء رائع وربنا يبارك فيكم ويا رب نجتمع فيزيكالي كلنا زي ما رحت جامعه مؤتمر اسكندريه وتشرفت بحضرتك والدكتور ياسر اتمنى ان احنا كلنا نجتمع ان شاء الله على الخير والحب والموده وجزاكم الله خير. وليد يو نيد تو تيل اس وليد طيب اولا يعني شكرا جزيلا على الكلمات الرقيقه جدا جدا اللي انا اقل من كده بكتير يعني والحقيقه انا ما عملش اي حاجه هو الجهود جهود الاساتذه المتحدثين يعني مجرد بس ان الواحد من زمان رفع رايه التكنولوجي زي ما حضرتك اتفضلت لكن الجهد هو جهد الاساتذه يعني. فشكرا جزيلا ان اصغر بكثير من حضراتكم تفضلتوا بيه اللي عايز اقوله اذا تسمح لي وانا اصغر بكثير من اني اتحدث بعد بروف عصام في نقطه انما هو من وازع يعني حرصي على حتى انا كنت ستراجلينج ماي سيلف از وليد ان انا افهمها في الجزء بتاع الثراثيك انيسيزيا ان وان لانج فينتليشن فيعني انا اصغر من اني اعلق بعد بعد بروف عصام اصغر بكثير كمان بس إذا تسمح لي بروف عصام لازم آخد بيرميشن من حضرتك لا يا بيه تفضل لا 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 شكرا جزيلا it's it's the standard technique that I used to use in Ireland when the patient starts to desaturate on a one lung ventilation the first thing go to the maximum FIU2 second thing put the nasal cannula thread it into the non-ventilated lung to submit extra oxygen in the non-ventilated lung this is the second step so you are oxygenating both lungs the third thing is peep to the lower or dependent lung the fourth thing is 5 to 10 centimeters CPAP to the non-dependent lung and finally if this all measures failed or not before the final do suction in both lungs maybe some accumulated secretions impairing the oxygenation ventilation and if all those parameters failed you need to go on two lungs ventilation and briefly for a few minutes and if the patient oxygenates well here comes the communication with the surgeon that we are facing a problem we need the deflated lung up for a problem so please try to make your procedure as short as you can 
and at the end or the, the last step if he needs to go to is the ligation or clipping or clamping of the pulmonary artery this is a stepwise approach i found not really written in any books but it, it's very practical and it will be very helpful if you put it in this uh, systematized fashion to answer in the immediate. i maybe forgot uh, one or two steps but this is the main steps i recall from thoracic anesthesia uh, that my last patient i was like one year ago or more uh, the mic is yours professor if you want to comment on that if you want to add or, uh, or or remove any of these steps thank you and thanks for allowing me to say this exactly what are you saying is the uh, ideal uh, steps for preventing the uh, hypoxemia or uh, preventing preventing the patient for exposure for any hypoxemia and i stressed all the time all the time for uh, the uh, early deflation, early deflation of the, the independent lung it will prevent any uh, ventilation uh, mismatch, ventilation perfusion uh, mismatch. And uh, all, all, all the time, recheck, recheck the position of the balloon of the endobronchial uh, tube or the uh, blocker because the most of the time while you are positioning the patient there is malposition of the uh, 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 bronchial blocker or for the uh, tube so repositioning and the mastering for using of the fiber optic bronchoscopy is the mandatory in cases of thoracic and, and all of your steps, Dr. Walid, exactly what we, we, we are doing in our uh, theater, and they, are, they should be uh, done in the same uh, steps. And as you mentioned, this is a practice. I am stressing about the practice. You cannot find this in any uh, book like this. So thank you, Dr. Walid, and appreciate your uh, comment. Professor, uh, the mic is yours. To answer. Last yeah, yeah. Finish. Doctor uh, uh, Walid, yani once again and more once again, yani I can't uh, have the words to express my deepest thank you, thank you for you for you for your uh, elegancy and um, and the upper hand. You give me more and more from your time and effort. Thank you, really. I deliver my extension uh, of uh, uh, many thanks to my great mentor and my special great Prof. Dr. Yasser Zaglou. Okay, thank you. Many, thank many, you. Thanks, many thanks to my colleague and my um, dear friend, Dr. Khalid Yassin, my iconic one of Batic Anesthesia. Really, Dr. Isam, you are today an exceptional one. You, you deliver an, um, uh, an extraordinary uh, lecture. Uh, you deliver it as you uh, do uh, some very beautiful music uh, on uh, a very old piano. Thank you, Dr. Esau. Thank you. So much. See you next meeting. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>